our planet is teeming with life. Critters of all shapes and sizes living in balance with one another. But not all living things are created equal. Sometimes a single species becomes so important that the system itself depends on them. They're called keystone species, and this is the story about one of them. Researchers and students from the University of Washington's School of Aquatic and Fishery Sciences travel deep into the Alaskan wilderness every summer. They've been coming here for over 70 years to study an iconic fish, the sockeye salmon. It is the largest running effort to monitor salmon and their ecosystems in the world. Many species of salmon are anadromous, meaning they spend part of their life in both fresh and salt water. And while the ocean is where they mature and grow strong, it is here, in lakes, rivers, and streams, where they start and finish one of the most amazing journeys in the animal kingdom. Alaska's Bristol Bay is home to Earth's largest population of sockeye salmon. And every year, tens of millions of adults make the pilgrimage back to where they were born to spawn. Swimming thousands of miles from the North Pacific and Bering Sea to the glacial lakes of southwestern Alaska. Once in the lakes, the salmon somehow find their way precisely back to the small streams where they themselves were born. Researchers think that smell is the key factor, with the unique scent of their home water guiding them back. Entering the stream can be perilous. When waters are low, there may not be enough depth to swim, and they must twist and turn their way over dry stones, making them an easy meal for bears, eagles, and gulls. Seeing the sacrifice that salmon make to reproduce is difficult to describe, which is why we wanted to show you. At its peak, a stream entrance is a swarm of energy individuals conserving their energy for just the right moment to make the dangerous sprint. As they travel upstream, water depths generally increase, and the overhang of the forest provides increased protection from predators the worst part of the journey is now behind them. What now begins is a series of complex mating rituals, with males seeking to earn the right to mate with females who will then bury the fertilized eggs deep within the sediment to mature. After spawning is complete, both parents will die, leaving their offspring to grow in the protection of the stream and lake for up to two years before heading out to the ocean. But before the salmon begin to run upstream, Scientists like Professor Ray Hilborn will often collect them in a net for a quick, fishy physical. It's messy and hard work, but provides incredibly precise information about local populations. Listen in as they measure each fish, check it for sexual maturity, take a tissue sample for genetic analysis, and tag them with a unique tracking number. Right. Female, female, right? Yes. 434. 112, White Hotel, Hotel.
because I'm a lefty, so I switched to my right hand. After their workup, the sockeye are released back into the lake. The visible tags are a sign of a hard day's work, and will provide insight into where individuals go once spawning begins. Professor Daniel Schindler has spent his career studying these individual streams, walking the banks each summer and counting the number of fish that return to spawn. This data drives fundamental research to better understand the species and manage the Bristol Bay fishery. No fish here is wasted. The deceased, whether from natural causes or predation, are collected males to the right and females to the left. Their ear bones, called otoliths, are extracted and analyzed to determine each fish's precise age. As you can imagine, it's a smelly job, with neighboring grizzly bears always nearby. Back in the cabins, after a long day in the field, teams of undergrad and graduate students, postdocs and researchers process the data into the largest library of sockeye salmon in the world. This work has generated too many discoveries to list, but one of the main lessons is that a healthy and resilient ecosystem behaves as the sum of small individual parts. Every lake and stream contributes to the tens of millions of sockeye that return each year. Their migration supports culturally critical subsistence fisheries, a world-class recreational fishery, and the largest, most sustainable commercial salmon fishery on the planet. These lessons are something we should all pay close attention to. As human populations continue to climb globally, we are putting more and more strain on the very resources we rely on to survive. Finding balance is a necessity, not a choice. And the story of sockeye salmon in Alaska shows us that a fully functioning ecosystem is productive, resilient, and beautiful. <laughs>